Good morning, Christian Life Assembly. Why don't we open in prayer this morning? Father, today as we celebrate communion, help us to search our hearts. Help us to examine ourselves. Lord, your word gives us a great hope that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Help us to come to you, to cleanse ourselves, to be forgiven, to confess our sins, to press on for Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And that means that you will and can do the same things in our lives today that you did so long ago. Father, I pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear today what your word is for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, if you come in person to the service today, or if you came uh, to the service in person today, you will uh, discover why it is that I have a little bit of extra growth on my face. Um, but suffice it to say, I can't really explain that in the video. But uh, in order to create a parallel between what I'm doing this morning in person and where we're going right now. Let's turn to the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 8, in verse 41, it says this, And there came a man named Jairus, and he was an official of the synagogue. And he fell at Jesus' feet, and he began to implore him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, and she was dying. But as he went, the crowds were pressing against him, and a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and could not be healed by anyone came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. And immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and Jesus said, Who is the one who touched me? And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Somebody did touch me, for I was aware that power had gone out of me. And the woman saw that she had not escaped notice. She came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her daughter, Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, you would think that that was the story. But no, no, that's a parenthesis. Because in, in verse 49... We go back to the story. It says, while he was still speaking, someone came from the house of the synagogue official and said, your daughter has died. Don't trouble the teacher anymore. But when Jesus heard this, he, he answered him, don't be afraid any longer. Only believe and she will be made well. When he came to the house, he didn't allow anyone to enter with him except Peter and James and John and the girl's father and mother. Now they were all weeping and lamenting. But he said, stop weeping. For the girl is not died, she's just asleep. And they began laughing at him, knowing that she had died. He, however, took her by the hand and called, saying, Child, arise. And her spirit returned, and she got up immediately and gave orders for something to be given to her to eat. Her parents were amazed, but he instructed them to tell no one what had happened. So this morning in the, in the service, I'm, I'm telling that story, but I'm going to take a slightly different angle uh, here on, on Facebook. I want you to imagine being in Jairus' place. Here is a man who, who is desperate enough. He's the ruler of a synagogue. He's desperate enough to ignore what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the teachers of the law all say about Jesus. And he's willing to come to Jesus in the middle of a public crowd. That tells you how desperate this father is for his only daughter to be made well. And he comes to Jesus and he says, Master, my daughter's sick. She's dying. Come and heal her. And Jesus agrees to. Understand, Jesus agrees to come. Now, as they are going, how far? We don't know. But it doesn't seem to indicate that it's a long distance before somebody else, who also has a need, reaches out and touches Jesus and is made well. But here's the situation. This desperate father is in the middle of of the street and this parenthesis happens. K 
can't you just see him yanking on Jesus' arm? Come on! My daughter's dying. You need to come now. But Jesus stops. He turns because there's a situation that needs to be addressed. And here's what I want you to understand. Jesus is not dictated by our schedule. He knows what he's supposed to do. He knows the time frame he's supposed to do it in. He said, I can do nothing unless the Father shows me. I can only say what the Father tells me to say. Jesus is never late. He's never early. He's always on time. And so here's this woman who comes up to Jesus. And she's weeping and wailing over the fact that she's been bleeding for 12 years. She's gone broke going to all the doctors and the quacks. She's worn out every priest in the, in the city because she's gone to them. Please, 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 there's got to be something. You know exactly what I mean. When we're desperate, we do anything. And so here's this woman who, in the middle of a crowd, Jesus is her last hope. And so she risks everything because she's unclean because of her bleeding. She should not be in a crowd. Everybody probably knows her, and they know she's unclean. So you've got to think that she's hiding her face, and she's trying not to be noticed, and she gets down, and she gets right close, and she just reaches up and touches the hem of Jesus' garment. She's desperate, too. And she's made well. Now, that could have been the end of the parenthesis. Power's gone out, she's healed. Jesus could have just walked on without making any comment and gone with Jairus. But he doesn't. He stops. And the parenthesis continues. He addresses the woman because it's not about the miracle. It's about knowing the miracle maker. It's not about the gift. It's about getting to know the giver. And so we see this, this instance of the heart of God. As Jesus stops and he turns around and he goes, who touched me? Seriously? Really? There's a crowd pressing in on him. Even Peter said, Master, come on. Everybody's pressing in on you. Of course somebody touched you. Jesus said, no, no, no. Somebody in particular touched me because power went out from me. You're not going to escape the notice of God. So this woman trembling in fear, man, I don't think any of us can even understand this type of fear. Someone who was unclean, ceremonially unclean, for, for one reason or another, could have been stoned for being in a crowd. And now she's being called out. She's been found out. She went to incredible lengths to hide it. And instead of being able to hide, she is pointed out. Jesus gives her the chance to step up in courage. And she takes it. She says, you know, it was me. And I was, I was healed instantly. And here is the heart of Jesus. Here's the heart of the God we serve. He says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Your step of courage, your act of desperate faith has allowed you to be made well. Yeah, it was the power that came out of Jesus. We know that. He said that. But her faith, her courageous Desperate, I'm going to do anything to get it done. Faith activated the power in Jesus. Do you see that? That's incredible. But meanwhile, again, back to the story. Meanwhile, the parenthesis is closing and here's Jairus. What has he been doing this whole time? What would you be doing if your daughter was on death's bed? And Jesus, the only one who could heal him, the only one who could heal her, the only one in the world who could save her from dying, was dawdling. What would you do? I don't know about you, but I think I'd be yanking on his arm pretty fierce. It's just me. I think there would not be too many people that would be, trying, would be able to stop me from getting him where I needed him to go. But we don't hear anything about that for a moment. So I don't know. Maybe Jairus is totally frozen in shock that this is happening. That Jesus 
is pausing for this unclean woman. I don't know. Maybe he's just stumped. Maybe he's frozen in paralysis over the fact that, wow, Jesus really just healed this woman right in front of me. Maybe he's on his knees in tears, weeping as he realizes the potential that really Jesus can do something for my daughter. And hope begins to swell. And just as it rises to a crest, it crashes because an official, an individual from the home, a servant from the home comes to Jairus and says, your daughter's died. Have you ever been there? Been at a place where hope is just beginning to surface again and something else happens and it crashes. I have. I have. Coming out of the cemetery after burying my wife's father, knowing that, you know what, the visa should be in the mail. It's time. We know that it's, it's good to go. We're, we're good here. And then getting a text message saying, it's going to be another 30 to 45 days. Boom. Hope just crashes. And you sit there and you don't know how to act. You don't know what to feel. You don't know how to, how to believe. You don't, know, you don't know what to do. The emotion well is just dry. And you got to think that with Jairus, he, he's at a place where he's just broken. Because the very next thing that we see is Jesus coming up and putting an arm on this man and saying, don't be afraid anymore. Just believe. And your daughter will be made well. That's the God I serve. Right there, that is the God I serve. Right at your lowest point, he shows up and he holds out hope and life and potential. And Jairus gets up. The servant's shaking his head going, what are you doing? She's dead. Leave him alone. Jairus just focuses in. No, no, Jesus is with me. If there's anyone who can do anything about this situation, it's him. And so they walk along together. Jesus isn't being pulled anymore by Jairus. No, in my mind's eye, Jesus has got his arm around Jairus' shoulder. And he's the one who's urging Jairus to keep going. And they get home and everybody's weeping and wailing. And if there's anything that's going to cause your faith to crumble, it's that. It's that. Seeing that outlet of emotion over the death of a loved one. And yet Jairus continues to walk in and Jesus goes with him and he says, stop weeping. She's not dead, she's asleep. And laugh, tears turn into laughter. Now, can you believe this? People are laughing at Jesus. We look back and we go, How can, are you nuts? But they didn't know. They didn't know what was coming. We know. We know what's coming. But they didn't. So Jesus and Jairus and Peter and James and John and, and the girl's mother go into the room and, you know, does Jesus go through this fancy rigmarole? No, no. He just says, child, arise. There's no formula, no incantations, no rituals. He doesn't make these fancy prayers or anything. He just speaks to the situation and it says immediately her spirit returned. I want you to understand this today. Even death heals when Jesus says heal. Even death has to give up its hard-fought prize when Jesus says give. My God is able to empty the grave. My God is able to roll the stone away. My God is able to bring back to life what is dead. He's able to restore what's been taken. He's able to return what's been stolen. And that's what happens. This girl sits up. Jairus and her, her mom are amazed. And Jesus says, don't, don't tell anybody. Right. Right. You're not going to have to tell anybody. 
because everybody that's outside that was weeping and wailing, oh, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Everybody down at the, at the waterside, Jesus, who heard the official say, don't bother to teach anymore, your daughter's dead. They're going to see this little girl on the playground tomorrow. You're not going to have to say anything because she's going to be testament enough to the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. I need you to get this today. I need you to grab a hold of this today because some of you have got people on the deathbed. Maybe not just people, dreams, hopes, jobs, businesses, marriages, relationships. Jesus is able to restore. But in order for him to restore, you have to come to him in desperate, all-consuming, I have nothing left type of faith. He honors that type of desperation. When you know that you have nothing, that's when his strength comes through. So I'm, I'm challenging you today. I'm challenging you today. Don't be like the people standing outside laughing at Jesus. Be like Jairus. Do whatever it takes to get Jesus into the house. Do whatever it takes to get Jesus into the situation. Do whatever it takes to pursue Jesus until you're able to reach out and touch the hem of his garment or until he's able to come and support you and carry you home. Be like Jairus. Because that's the only real source of hope. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now that you would just overwhelm us with your love and your grace. That you would surround us with your power and your mercy. And you would just come and heal and save and restore. Father, if they haven't given their lives to Jesus, the people listening today, let them do that now. Let them just bow their knee and confess their sins and believe in Jesus and receive the forgiveness he offers. And I pray, God, that for each one of us that we would come with desperate faith to you. Desperate, God, I need you and only you, only you are going to do it type of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Go and be like Jairus.